in collaboration with Felipe Asenjo and recently published in a couple of papers that you can read if you're interested in the subject. And I would like to stress that all what I'm going to present now is based in usual quantum mechanics or paraxial optics with no modification whatsoever. That is, there are no uh, changes to the usual quantum mechanics or optics. And also some of the results that I'm going to present have already been tested uh, in optical and quantum mechanical settings. Exper when I mean tested, I mean experimentally obtained the results. So what I'm going to present is a new way to find the exact solutions to one dimension of quantum mechanics, but uh, this can also be applied to multidimensional quantum mechanics. I'm going to show you just the one dimensional case because it's simpler and we can go faster. So uh, we are going to define the potential function which uh, is related to the amplitude and the phase of any wave function. What I'm going to talk about really is in the Schrodinger equation realm, but it can be applied to any uh, wave equation irrespective of the fact that it is quantum or classical. What is going to be important through this uh, conversation is we are going to focus on this uh, potential function and on the bond potential. It is important to realize that for most of the potentials, no solutions to the Schrodinger equation produce a vanishing bond potential. So to take into account the, the bond potential is very important. I'm going to define the bond potential in a couple of slides. Uh, probably the first one to use this technique was Madelung in the late 20s of last century. And Bohm uh, worked a lot on this version of quantum mechanics and started in, starting in 1952. Uh, so I'm going to show you, these are experimental results and are the only ones that I'm going to show. These were not obtained by us. This is a group of people with, that work in optics in the Central Florida University. And what we have is that in say in a free particle, you get what is called acceleration due to an 80 package. And what you have in blue here are the experimental results of the intensity of an 80 beam. And these are the theoretical results for the same airy beams, and you see that uh, the things are pretty well understood from the theoretical viewpoint. What I'm going to tell you is that it's the, you have a free <clears throat> light beam, which is an airy beam, and the propagation distance in 30 centimeters, the, be the beam is deflected one millimeter. So, this is something very macroscopic that you get for a free particle, a, a deviation of one millimeter in 30 centimeters. Now I'm, I'm going to start with the Schrodinger equation. Uh, equation one and two are the uh, two uh, complex conjugate versions of the Schrodinger equation for a, a real potential B, and the madelung bohm approach consists in writing the wave function, the complex wave function, in terms of two real functions, the amplitude and the phase. This is a, well, very well known. And you now separate the real and imaginary parts of the Schrodinger equations, and you get two equations, four and five, where prime denotes the derivative with respect to x and dot the, the derivative with respect to t. And what you get are 
uh, two familiar equations, which are probably presented in a different fashion. The first equation, as you can easily see, uh, this equation is the hamilton jacobi equation for the potential B with an extra term. Note, this extra term is what's called the bond potential. Uh, note that in this approach, H bar appears only on the bond potential. Everything else, the H bar just cancel. So what you have is a modified version of the classical hamilton jacobi equation for the potential B plus a term which is essentially the second derivative or in multidimensional case, the Laplacian or the D'Alembert version, if you're dealing with a uh, relativistically invariant equation, uh, of the amplitude over the amplitude. The second equation, which may look unfamiliar, is just the continuity or the uh, probability conservation equation. So the second equation means that probability is conserved. And the first equation is a modification of the classical hamilton jacobi equation. Many people uh, get rid of this term by one or two or three arguments. One is saying that this term is going to be very small in the case of quantum mechanics because H bar is small. In the case of optics is because you go <clears throat> to the ray optic limit where the uh, wavelength is very small, or you say that uh, this derivative is very small, and so usually you get rid of the bond potential, and it, well, it has a name, this is the, when you get rid of this, this is the WKB approximation in quantum mechanics, or the aconal equation of in optics. So we're going to be looking at this uh, bond potential, which I just named, uh, which appears naturally in the in, in the Hamilton-Jacobi section of the Schrodinger equation. Now it is easy. Well, I'm going to return a couple of slides. It's, to, it is easy to realize that this can be a thought of, of a curl. So you can define a potential F, which is a, a function of X and T, which is a real function of F, where the probability or the A square or the intensity in the case of Hopkins is F prime and uh, the current essentially is minus F dot. If you define this F, then you have solved immediately half of the equations, that is the continuity equation, and then you plug F back into the Hamilton-Jacobi equation. And you have to make a further derivative, and what you get is one equation nonlinear, which is the version of the Hamilton-Jacobi equation when I have taken one derivative and you have the force instead of the potential. So uh, this equation is the kind of master equation for the Schrodinger equation in, in one dimension. And of course, you should uh, solve this given the force, or you can try to see what happened with F and see what forces you can uh, describe with the uh, lowercase f. Sergio, five minutes. Oh, thank you. So uh, I'm going to study now uh, the case of vanishing bond potential. So that's an equation for F. And when you have that, the most general lowercase f that you get is this one, where you have a three 
arbitrary functions of time. And therefore, a, any potential that cannot be written in terms of this F, then uh, they are not going to have vanishing bond potential. The force has the, the form of 14 and the most general force you can get in one dimension that uh, will have some solutions that have vanishing bond potential is that one over there, which is not, of course, very illuminating. So we will proceed with some uh, examples for A, B, and C. Okay, in the case of vanishing bond potential, for instance, is the free particle, but there are a few other examples which are included in the force before. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit faster now, and I'm going to talk about the case of the 80 beam. This solution was found by Berry and Balas in 1979, and as I just mentioned, was of the, the experiment confirming it was uh, performed in 2007. And there is another experiment with the electrons, the, the first one with, with light. And so for this special F given in 23, you get this A and S, which correspond to the, <clears throat> uh, the solution given by uh, Balas. And what is important to realize is that the bond potential, which appears here, when you take the derivative of it, you get the acceleration due to 80, which is constant. And if you get the velocity from the phase, you get the velocity of 80, which is consistent with this uh, acceleration that you have there. So, uh, the bond potential is real in the sense that the acceleration that it produces is seen in the beams and then the electrons, and the velocity associated to it through the momentum, which is given by the gradient, say, of the phase, uh, corresponds to the acceleration obtained using the a solution by Berry and Balas. So uh, what is important to realize is that for a given external potential, say a, a capacitor or whatever, uh, you have solutions that may have, in some cases, vanishing bond potential, but other solutions to the same external potential uh, may have non-vanishing one potential, and it's the case of the uh, solution that I just mentioned. And I think I'm running out of time, so I thank you, and I'm ready to try to answer questions in case there are people who would like to ask them. Great, thank you very much, uh, Sergio. So, uh, uh, Francisco has a question, please, Francisco. Yes, thank you. Michael, so actually I have several questions, but I mean maybe just say two. So um, in, in some of your expression, clear, I think it clearly appears in, in this guys the charge and derivative. And charge and derivatives has a um, lot of interesting properties. So the first question is, do you uh, analyze your system in, in, in the light of the charge and derivative? And the second question is, um, there are um, several techniques to, to produce, for instance, potential with same properties. Um, I'm talking, for instance, about uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics. And in particular, there are ways to construct time-dependent supersymmetric uh, quantum mechanics transformation. So you may have system with same following properties. So the second question is, have you studied uh, that um, the, this kind of potential under also that, that point of view? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, I was, well, I had 15 minutes, so I was talking only about two papers, really about one. 
uh, and we have done everything that you have said. We have studied supersymmetry, we have produced uh, time-dependent potentials in which, in spite of the fact that the force is different from zero, the particles move as free particles, uh, and we have been doing this in collaboration with a team of colleagues in uh, Puebla, Mexico, and we have already written some of these papers. Some of them are, have already been sent to, for review, and some of them we are still producing, but all what you have said uh, has been taken into account. There is a recent paper by a couple of, no, by three people, uh, I think it's in Valencia, who published in Nature what they call the time uh, sector of supersymmetry, where they apply supersymmetry, uh, but not to, the, the usual one is applied to factorize uh, derivatives with respect to space, and they do it with but derivatives with respect to time, and they work in optics, and they have developed some models and have tested them uh, experimentally. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question of uh, Joaquin. Uh, please, Joaquin. Yes. Uh, it's related in part to previous uh, question about the Schwarzschild. Uh, your equation nine, uh, it will be the Schwarzschild if instead of one half, you have three half. Therefore, I, I was really wondering if uh, this is, was a typo or was like that. No, it's not a typo. Ah, it's a typo. Okay. No, it's, it's not a typo. Ah, it's not a typo. No. Okay. Uh, are you aware that if that was three half, that will be the Schwarzian? Yes, I am. Yes, okay. I am. Uh, Thank you. Any comment uh, on this uh, piece with one half? Well, this is the, as you see, this piece is the only one that has the H bar on it. So it is the bomb potential. This part here is exactly the bomb potential. Uh, and with this time, with this space derivative, it is exactly the, the bomb force, say. So here we have the external force and here we have the bomb force. Uh, we have been working with this and we have extended this to multi dimensions. And we're going to be checking on that, but this is not a type of that's what we get. And uh, uh, that's the equation. This equal to zero is the equation that you have to solve to get uh, this result. Or this, re the, the result uh, here, let's see. This result 12 is the most general solution to this equal to zero with a one half here, not three halves. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Do, excuse me, one last thing. Do you have the analogous thing of uh, that sort of object for more dimensions? I am. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, if, where I can find this? Uh, I will send you a preprint as soon as we finish it. Okay. We are right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sergio. Okay, thank uh, you. Thank you very much.